So this book is called Waiting for Wings by Lois Ellert. Here we go. Oh, I think someone's at the door. Who could that be? Come in. Oh, look everyone. Look who decided to join us today. It's Bella. Hi, Bella. Would you like a treat, Bella? Would you like to come join us? There you go, Bella. All right, now we're all together. Here we go. Waiting for Wings by Lois Ellert. Out in the fields, eggs are hidden from view. Clinging to leaves with butterfly glue. Soon caterpillars hatch, they creep and chew. Each one knows what it must do. Find a place where winds don't blow. Then make a case in which to grow. Caterpillar changes now begin. Body and wings take shape within. When it's time, each case is torn. Wings unfold, new butterflies are born. They pump their wings, get ready to fly. Then hungry butterflies head for the sky, looking for flowers with nectar to eat. They catch a whiff of something sweet. They follow that fragrant scent of perfume until they find our garden in bloom. We've been waiting for wings. We watch them circle, land on their feet. Unroll their tongues and begin to eat. They dip and sip. And fly away back home to the fields. They have eggs to lay. And that is the end. So it's a very short little story. Um, and what I love about this book is that there are so many different colors. All these different butterflies that you see in here are um, pretty close to real butterflies. The patterns and the colors. And so on this back page, they have all the different butterflies that they were inspired by. So let me show you. This yellow and blue and red one is a tiger swallowtail. And so this is a tiger swallowtail chrysalis. And this is a tiger swallowtail caterpillar food, which is a cherry leaf, they eat cherry leaves. And here we have the monarch butterfly. I'm sure you all know about the monarch butterfly. We see these in Vermont. And so here's what a monarch chrysalis looks like. And monarchs eat milkweed. I love the different patterns that you see on a monarch butterfly. 
And here is what they look, at, look like as a caterpillar. Let's see. Oh, and I forgot to show you, this is what the t tiger swallowtail caterpillar looks like as a little caterpillar. So this kind of shows us the underwing. That's what it looks like on the other side. Here we have the painted lady. And that's what they look like as a caterpillar. They have little spikes on them. That's what they look like as a chrysalis. And then when they finally come out, they look like this. And then up here we have the buckeye. The buckeye, ooh, look at that. That's a pretty cool looking caterpillar. That's what they look like as a chrysalis. And then they hatch into this. And what do the buckeyes eat? They eat plantain leaves. So this book is really fun. Oh, and then on this back page, they show you all the different names for parts of the butterfly. So we have the abdomen, the thorax, and the legs, the hind wing, and the forewing. So butterflies actually have four wings. They have two on each side. And here we have the flowers that they like to um, get nectar from. So this one is called an Indian blanket flower, or a Gaillardia. We have a phlox, a butterfly weed, a lantana, marigold, black eyed Susan, pentas, verbena, cosmos, zinnia, butterfly bush. Impatience. Hopefully you're being very patient right now because we're gonna be making art soon. So these, I'm just showing you this to give you some inspiration. Um, uh, this is Butterflies and Moths of the World. So inside this book are tons of different types of butterflies and moths. Um, you can see them in their chrysalis and after. So um, this is a really cool book to look through. I know that um, some of you um, may have seen some really cool butterflies before. And if not, this is a fun project where you get to make up your own butterfly or make up your own uh, insect. I'll also show you how to make a bee because we are in Mr. Bee's art hive. So, some of these are really cool. I love how um, all the different colors and patterns on these are really bright. Some of them have dots. And I really like how some butterflies, different types of butterflies, have these long little tails that hang down from their wing. So, what I want to talk about before I show you how to draw your own butterfly or bee is something called symmetry. Symmetry is when something is the same on both sides. So you'll notice that all the uh, colors and shapes and patterns on this side of the butterfly are almost the same as on this side of the butterfly. So when you do your drawing, try your best to keep the same design on both sides. And I'll show you a, a fun trick to make sure that you keep your wings symmetrical. Ooh, look at that one. Mother Nature is a pretty cool artist. And some of them are really simple, but just totally beautiful. Some of them are like bright and neon. Some of them look like tie-dye. So hopefully this is inspiring you. 
Okay, so this project starts with two pieces of paper, scissors, pencil, and a Sharpie. If you don't have all of these supplies, you can do it, um, instead of scissors, you can tear the paper, and instead of Sharpie, you can just keep it pencil. So the first thing you wanna do is take a piece of paper and fold it in half. And you're gonna fold it Um, hamburger bun style so that the fold is in the middle of the longest side of your piece of paper. The next thing you're going to do is fold it back up, make sure that it's folded, and make sure that the, uh, the edge that's folded, that's where you're going to start your drawing. So where we talked about symmetry. We talked about how symmetry is when things are the same on both sides. So right now, um, this line, this fold, is the line of symmetry. And so um, what I'm gonna do is draw my butterfly wings, but I'm only gonna draw one side. And then when I cut it out, I can, um, it'll be the same on both sides. So to keep it really simple here, you can just do almost like you're drawing a heart, but like a, a little funky heart. Actually, look, it looks like a bee for Mr. B. Um, if you wanna get a little bit more um, complicated, I'll show you on this side, and this will be the one that I cut out. I'm gonna go out, maybe squiggle a little bit, come in, and then do a big curve and come back up. Make sure that you don't connect the line. So you start and end in different spots on the fold. The next thing you do is cut it out. Make sure you're cutting into the fold. Like I said, you could tear it if you don't have scissors and that would actually look pretty cool. When you're cutting, focus on cutting um, the line that you drew. So now, when I open that up, I have a nice set of butterfly wings. So uh, for this project, you can actually get two um, pieces of art out of one project. So I can decorate this as a butterfly. I could um, make a bunch of them and, and put them around my, my house or my room. But the, what I want us to do actually is use this as a tracer. And so I'm gonna set the wings that I just cut out onto my paper and trace it. And careful to hold it down Draw light. Doesn't have to be perfect, we're just having fun here. We're just making some art. Does not have to be stressful. All right, nice, I'm happy with that. So, from here, I'm gonna actually erase the spot where the wings connect, and that's where I'll put my body. You can Make it really simple, just a nice long oval. Uh, maybe a little tiny head and some eyes. And maybe some curly Q antenna. So, like I said before, when we talk about symmetry, when you do a design on one side of your wing, let's just do a simple line comes up and down. I have to do the same on the other side. So it's, it's almost like a game, it's kind of fun. You have to try and challenge yourself. If I do it on this side, how do I make it the same on the other side? So you're, it's, it's, uh, it can get really complicated, but that's why if you want it to look um, 
If you want it to look really symmetrical, then draw a light till you got it right. I like the moths that have those big circles. They, they almost look like owl eyes. And I like the moths and the butterflies that have the kind of squiggles. So let's see, I did one, two, three, four, five. So I'll try and do five on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. And I can do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm not really worrying too much about whether it looks right or wrong. At this point, I'm just adding shapes. So I do one on this side and one on this side. Let's see, one, two, three circles on this side. And I have to figure out if, if it's here on this side, it must be here on that side. Okay, I kind of, I like how this looks. Maybe I'll add some lines to the body. And I can trace with Sharpie. If you don't have a Sharpie, that's okay. Okay, so here is my finished uh, traced butterfly. As you can see, I added a few more little details I decided to add little peace signs in the wings to kind of make it a little bit more um, personal to me. Um, so this is my little peace butterfly. So if you have colored pencils at home, you can color it with colored pencils or markers or crayons or anything that you can use to color. Um, if you don't have anything to color your butterflies with at home, please um, just be patient. We are working on getting some art supplies home to you. But um, if you do have some, then this is a great time to think about coloring using symmetry. So if I do this one red, this little squiggle here, make this one red. And you can also think about using pattern. So um, thinking about maybe I do this one red, these two are gonna be red, and then skip and do this one red on this side and this little section here. So you're kind of coloring in the different sections that you've created. You can blend colors together, which I love, I love doing that with colored pencils or crayons or pretty much anything. I love blending colors. So I'll kind of lighten up on my red as I get um, up here. And then I'll do the same on this side to make sure that it's symmetrical and then I'll change the color up. So I think it would be cool if it faded from red into orange. You can think about maybe doing a rainbow. So fading into orange here, make sure I do it on this side too. And then I can lighten up as I press down so that it makes the color lighter, lighten up on your on the pressing down on, on the pencil, which creates a nice little shade. Then I can move on to yellow. Remember, Roy G. Biv. Don't forget the rainbow. And so now I have my yellow on this side, gotta finish my yellow on this side. And this, is a great project for, um, you can, you know, pause and come back to it. It's almost like you've created your own coloring sheet. And depending on how many color options you have, it could take you a really long time. This is not a project to be rushed. This could probably take you a full hour or more if you really spend your time. And, and try your best. Or maybe you wanna do a bunch of really simple little butterflies. Instead of making one super detailed butterfly, you could make lots of very simple butterflies. All right, so I'm jumping into my blue here. I might not have enough space to do 
the rest of the rainbow, but that's okay. I'm gonna stop with blue. And then maybe this last section here, I will do pink. Pink is the winner. Here we go, pink. Maybe I can fade my pink into something. If you're watching at home, shout out, what do you think I should make the pink fade into? I can't hear you. Louder. Oh, I heard yellow. Those of you who shouted yellow, nice work. All right. Can't forget the other side. So I am going to stop and I will um, put the picture up when I'm finished so that you can see what it looks like when I completed um, all the different sections. I hope that you have fun with this and I hope that you um, can show me what it looks like when you are done. We are going to set up um, some seesaw and some Artsonia ways for you to share your artwork with me.